Okay, um, I'm trying to remember where we left off in this video. I think we were putting the motor in, maybe, or something like that. I, I don't even remember where we were at. But anyways, I'm going to show you where we're at now, okay? Um, we did pull, we pulled the rear end apart. Look at that, you see through it. Hello! 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 Okay, yeah, that's all missing. Um, we ordered a new chunk and axles and brake kit from um, Quick Performance. So that is on its way. There's the uh, chunk we pulled out. We are going to a 35 spline, I think, axles. And we're going to a Yukon center section because we need to be able to, you know, that motor is 650 horse. So um, we need to be able to hold the horsepower in the rear end. So, and it had the Ford axles with the adapters on it. And it had the weird Lincoln brakes and, by the time we get all that to work, it's just cheaper just to put on the aftermarket brakes and and just do that. So that's where we're at there. So that stuff should be in next week. So probably in the next video after this one, we'll be putting the rear end together in order and drive shaft. Um, obviously, you know, we got all the high end metal patching done. Nice thing about the metal patching up here, they got a little more weld to it on the other side. So the biggest project I'm working on right now is I'm building exhaust, okay? And uh, well, that's the pile, okay? So we got this pile right here. You can buy that from right here, show and field. You can buy a box of bends. This is, um, this is, they must be training guys how to bend, and they, when they screw them all up, they put them all in a box, and they sell them to you at their cheap rate. So that way we can build the header for here, because, well, I'll show you when we bring it down to how much of the header that I reused was, and it's not a lot. But the goal here is to, you know, side pipes. Why? Because you know me, I like side pipes. That's just, I, I'm a side pipe guy. So we might as well put side pipes on. So in this um, little segment here, I'm going to weld up, I got this three inch right here, pipe, right there, see? Okay, and just imagine this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, I know we're imagining, but just pretend. But here in another about five more minutes of this video, you won't have to pretend because we'll have it on. How's that sound? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So I guess I'm gonna get the old welder cracking here. Um, and we are going to uh, weld up the pipe, get it long enough, and then get some mounting brackets on and, and get it on the car. And once we get it on the car, then we can hook up way in there to those which as you can see yeah that's that's all the header that worked that that much right there yep pretty pretty awesome huh well no and this part that part works too so, well you know you win some you lose some and it's just how it goes but i'm gonna uh probably let them learn how to talk today and uh I guess I'm going to set you up here. I'm going to weld up uh, these pipes and get some brackets made up and get these babies on the car so we can get it lowered back down and get that header kit going. Header. Hey. Kit. Okay, can you picture it now? Yeah, something like that, okay? Look, all I did is I put it together, I put a couple tacks on it, squared it up, tacked it all. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about, okay? So I guess I'm gonna weld this guy up, and then we're gonna build up some brackets, and we're gonna get this part on the car. And then we're gonna work through that part. Yeah, sounds like fun to me. Okay, so, um, obviously I got it welded up. And I'm starting to put the um, brackets on. So I got this one actually tacked in. I know it's a hose clamp holding it right now. I'm going to use a, a different bracket around it. But I'll show you what I'm doing. 
if I have kind of like a half a piece that goes over it like this, right? And then I got this piece that goes on like this, so that's my spacing. And then I'm running a clamp around the whole thing, and then I'm welding this to the rocker and welding this to this. So that's my space out from the rocker, and that would be how I'm going to hold it on. And again, for right now, I'm using a hose clamp, but I'm going to use like a heavy round band clamp to get around them and hold them in so they don't fall off. So I'm going to set up and get this one tacked in, pull the pipe back off, weld it all up, weld it all up, and then um, at that point, I can start cutting and getting my way up, up to there. So that's kind of how I'm holding them on. Should work out well. I mean, the ones on the wagon weren't held on even close to this good, and they never ripped off. So it can't be that bad. Okay, look at that. So we're all welded on, and then I also added these little tabs here. Um, I did three of them down through here. Okay. And again, I will be changing out these hose clamps because we all know them hose clamps are not going to keep this exhaust on this car. But once I do a great big fat strap there, it'll be beautiful. But now for the beautification process. Now we are going to paint these too. So they're going to be painted a white, like actually off white. But you know, what's a good side pipe? You know, without the old heat guard on it. And uh, I know you may be saying there's no mufflers in that. That's just three inch pipe. Well, that pipe right there identifies as a muffler. Okay. So we're going to go with that. And um, I guess let me get this part on here. Okay, there we are. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? That's how much room there's going to be between the ground and the bottom of this car. Right there. That's it. Pretty epic if you like side pipes. So now I got to get from here up through here to there. But there's several problems with this scenario, and uh, I'll show you here in just a few minutes. Okay, here we are. So here's my problem. Okay, so I gotta get this over to there. But you see my problem here? See, that's where my problem lies. And uh, when my tire's turned all the way, I gotta get through here. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut. Oop, I'm shaking, Zach's gonna hate this. I'm gonna cut this side of the mount off. Now technically, I already put bigger mounts right underneath over here. So the floor is supported right over here, and then there's a second one basically just holding the firewall up. And the way I did the tunnel and everything, this brace really is not doing much now. Anyways, so I'm just going to do the right thing and cut it out of the way and let future Ricky worry about that. That's what I'm thinking. So um, now I'm, I'm not going to you know, fool you at all. I'm, I've already done the other side because you know how that works. But see how much room there's not? Well, here's where it gets tricky-ish. Right here ain't bad. There's plenty of room for everything here. The other side, I got brakes and steering right here. So the other side was a lot trickier. Um, so the flanges, that's actually that flange was for that side and that flange was for this side and I ended up unflanging them and cutting them off and moving them. And then I ended up just cutting all the pipes off and then I ended up buying, like I said, more pipes that are pre-bent and Basically making an exhaust that all clears all this. So I will show you the other side so I can kind of show you the issues I ran into. So here's the other side, okay? There's the header, look at that. I made it in here. So here, my problem is I have brakes right here, okay? 
So I gotta stay clearance for here so I can run brake lines. Over here I have a steering box and I have to get down them power steering lines right here. So I can't, I have to be careful so I have room for that. Not to mention I also have to keep room for spark plug boots and then when the tire turns in all the way I needed all that room. So here's what I ended up with. I ended up building these headers here and when the tire goes in I got, I got about an inch room right up beside this and about an inch right here. Right up in here. So I have tons of room now. Now I'm going to paint these white and then I'm going to wrap them from about right here down through because um, obviously I don't want the heat on my brakes. I don't want the heat on my steering box and I don't want the heat on my feet, which are right here. I mean, that's my clutch pedal right there. So um, I don't want all that. But yeah, no, it came out really good. And then you see it kind of comes down and then runs out and out the side. This car may be a little loud, um, possibly. We might, it might have a little tone to it. But yeah, I think overall the header came out good once I sand them up and finish cleaning up the welds. Um, and then paint them. I think they're going to look phenomenal. I think it's just, I mean, uh, not exactly what I was planning on doing. But that's what we ended up with. So I'm going to get going on the other side and get all that cut out. And work on getting this elbow headed that direction with the... Um, collector and then once I get that done from there it's just a matter of getting one pipe in from here to there and then just working them through with the tire turn so we have enough clearance for everything but yeah fun I mean if you like this stuff I mean it's probably gonna take me all week to do this because you know just working in the evening times on it but I'll get it and it'll be a thing of beauty okay um I don't remember exactly where I left off here because it's been a day or two. Um, but we did finish getting this elbow finished in, weld in here. Um, I got the O2 bung, it's going right here. It'll go up in this fender, plenty of room for that. So it won't be out of the car. And then um, I've started to build this header. So um, it's looking pretty good. I got those two in. I gotta finish, you know, obviously cleaning up the welds and stuff but they're laying in really good and now I got to get these two to come up over the top of all of this and then go down and come into here so it's uh it's getting there I wanted to kind of show you where I'm at but you see I have see the tire clearance was it turned all the way so I'm good um no problems here that's the whole the whole point man putting side pipes on something where you're, it's on the frame and you can't come up underneath the frame. So, um, a lot more work than what I thought it was going to be. But it's going to look cool when it's done. And then uh, I even got the paint in. You know, you wait, you'll see. I mean, you know where I got the paint. It's the only place to buy the paint. Um, you know, good old KBS. But uh, you wait until we get these babies all painted up. They're going to look real nice. So I'm going to get back to fitting. My pipe pile is getting smaller. Um, I had a whole lot more pipe than that. So I really knocked the heck out of that pile of pipe and cut elbows and stuff. It's worked out pretty well. So, and I'll have enough to do something with. I don't know what, something though. But I guess back at fitting uh, these, getting them to start going across and then get them turned and get them down in there so we can get that collector welded up. I'll be glad when I'm done with exhaust. Then I get to move on to brake lines and fuel lines and clutch lines and you know basically the lines is what you know I got left it's all the lines so awesome sauce well I'm gonna get back at it and uh, like I said this takes hours for me just to fit and cut and tack and stuff and I am not gonna sit here and make you suffer through that because it's bad enough I'm suffering through it hey look we are back again Hey look, look I see something in there happening. Holy crap. Is that what I think I see? Is that the elusive Zach in the wild? Hey elusive Zach. I can't believe you made it out here to help. I know, I finally got a day off. You finally got a day off. Mm -hmm. Well that's good, I'm glad you got a day off to work. Mm -hmm. So um, you wanna take a second and tell these fine gentlemen and ladies what you are attempting to do? in this awesome car? Um, we bought the cheapest wiring harness money could buy. The cheapest? 
Like, go on Amazon. Put wiring harness. Sort by cheapest. Sort lowest price first. That first one that comes up that's got all the circuitry here, that's the one we bought. Perfect. <laughs> so, so what do you think of this kit so far compared to the Rebel kit? The Rebel kit's nicer. <laughs> it's smaller. <laughs> and it's laid out better. Okay, and the wiring ain't nearly as big a case. No, you can tell this is China's finest of wire, and to get the same ant carrying capacities, it's got to be like three times the size, and the casing is thick and stiff and like, I mean... It's perfect. Yeah, it holds its shape. Yeah. <laughs> It's not flexible at all. Okay, so... And I've removed about 87 circuits out of this thing because we just don't need them for this application. Okay, so yeah, so we, as you can tell, we, we went with the finest of all. Um, I do see you got a whole bunch of control stuff. Maybe I can bring them in and show them that here. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, sorry, we're having door problems. Hold on, no, nope, now you're upside down. Now you're back side up. Okay, so in here, up underneath um, the dash, um, he's put the MSD box, and he's put the Holly, and he's put his, um, it looks like your circuitry is up there. Yeah, so in this car, we don't know how good the ignition switch is. But it we, works. We are going to reuse it, and by testing it with the old horseshoe mode here, it passes continuity between the battery terminal and the run terminal. So, we're going to use it. So, we're going to use it. But... We're not going to run all the power through it. All right, we're going to run it through a relay. So we got two big heavy-duty relays up here. One of them is dedicated just for the Holly, because I don't know if you guys know this, but the Hollies, or really any aftermarket ECU, likes clean power. So you run it through a relay. And it's and, cleaner. And it's clean. Her. So. Well, it's come from this car, then. Well, yeah. It may be dirty between the relay and that. But, okay. Yes. So then the mm -hmm. other relay is going to be our ignition relay. So we're just going to trigger this relay here, which is going to power up this whole bus bar with keyed power. So That's pretty smart to do. So, okay. So you're working on getting some wiring in this thing. Yep. They're trying to sort through it and get the wiring laid out. Cool. Well, that sounds like you're making progress. I'm just, you know. And then um, other than that, we're, we're still on header and exhaust mode here. So, I did want to bring you over here. We did finish up this other header. See, look at that, she's there. Now, you're not gonna get the full potential of the headers, you know, until we get them back on, but first we're gonna paint them. Yeah, and you know what we're using. KBS Extreme Temperature Coat Primer and Paint. Because it works phenomenal, okay? The headers on the truck, that stuff, it's, uh, it's rock solid, so. Um, it, and we use it on the wagon too. So this stuff uh, works really well as an alternative to getting um, heat coated or whatever, you know, especially if, jet hot. a jet hot, I think it's what it's called. So, um, you know, if you're running just cheap steel headers like us, you want them to last more than, you know, a week, good option right there. So we did finish up this one. This is the one you guys saw me doing. Um, it's, it's, I gotta spray down with some wax and grease and then I'm gonna give it um, some primer you let them uh, tack up a primer. I'll give them a couple coats of the off-white. And uh, at that point, then go back on the car. But before I do that, okay, what we're gonna actually work on now is brakes, okay? So we got the masters there. We gotta get the brake lines down and over and around. And it'd be a whole lot easier without the headers in the way. So that is the plan for the weekend is, uh, knock out brake lines, and then, um, you know, Zach's obviously poking wires everywhere and, and such, but we're going to get that knocked out and, uh, yeah, see where it goes. So I guess I'm going to get some primer on these. You know, I may, I may do a little time lapse here in a little bit when I'm doing some painting. We'll see. And, uh, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. I mean, we're bound. This thing's going to make hot rod power tour. So. Maybe. I can't cross them. There we go. Hopefully. Awesome sauce. We'll be back. Okay. So, 
As you can see, they are primed. Look at that primeness. Yeah. And now we're getting ready to hit it with the good stuff. The old extreme KBS paint. So, you know, I was thinking maybe I'd bring you along for a little spray painting journey. And uh, we'll go ahead and, you know, let's give these some color. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. So let me put you over here where I can be less wiggly. And you can get the full effect of me painting. Maybe. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Very nice. So what I like to do is start on the back side where you can't see what I'm actually painting. And uh, you know, we're just gonna give them a light coating. We're not going crazy here. So these are gonna get about three coats. So I should give them a good tack coat like this. It's, uh, it needs another coat. That was just the first coat. You can kind of still see through it. And uh, I'll let it uh, dry for probably about an hour or so. <coughs> oh, God, that paint's stiff, stout. And uh, I'll let it dry about an hour or so, and then um, I'll just let them dry for, you know, a day, and then we'll wrap them. And uh, then they can go in the car. So we're going to wrap them from about here to there because that's right where your feet are at in the car so we want to kind of help our feet a little bit yeah they're gonna look freaking phenomenal in white 